After spending nearly four years in Japan as an apprentice for the Nagazato family, Richard Bresnahan returned to St. John's University with a wealth of pottery knowledge and skills. He set up a completely indigenous pottery studio, including the largest wood-firing kiln of its kind in North America. We visited with Richard about his pottery and philosophies. When you're becoming a artist, especially working in a clay material, you're, you're having what we call shiaji. Shi means clay, aji means taste. You're learning the taste of the clay. And so that's a metaphor for you're taking in your exterior environment into your interior environment. You're developing a spirituality to your material. I went to high school here at St. John's Prep School in 1968. And then in 1972, um, started here at the university. My art history teacher, Sister Johanna Becker, was working on major research in uh, Japan, especially the ancient Karatsu ceramics. And then I left uh, for an apprenticeship in Japan in 1975. My first three months in Japan I didn't even get on the potter's wheel. The first three months were then learning how to wash ashes to make glazes. That kind of step-by-step -step process of learning um, provided me with the foundation so that after three and a half years of throwing and kiln building, here was a methodology that was taught to an individual saying, Oh, I can do this. I have been given the skill sets that I can humanely do this myself. Or I can teach this to young people that this is a very efficient, but also humane way of working. Thank you. When I returned back from Japan in 1979, Father Michael asked me, what can St. John's do for you? I described the idea of setting up a clay program that had not been done in any universities in the United States, where that we'd only work from in indigenous systems, working only with natural materials found in the area, and we would develop um, a clay program working with local materials and wood firing. And at that time in 1979, there were only around eight operating wood kilns in North America. I was guessing that there might be materials here. Francis Schillinger, who was taking his children out on a 4-H project to find crystals, found the clay deposit in a road cut bed in Collegeville Township. So I go up to Father Michael Blecker in the president's office and I say, Father Michael, I found a clay deposit and they're going to be digging the clay deposit out in the next season, but it's the most beautiful clay and I want to dig enough clay for St. John's for 300 years of clay making. And he turns in his chair and he looks at me and says, Richard, in 1,500 years of Benedictine history, 300 years is not all that long. I trust what you're doing. I'm very in interested in functionalism because one of the things, if you know that you're making something from a material that's 144 million years old, it's a little laser light of time. From 144 million years, you've changed the material and you fired it and it's forever changed. That's a great responsibility. You're taking something and you're changing it forever. You know, we name our children after people who have saved your life or you've admired them or they're very important in your life. Well, Sister Johanna saved my life as a teacher and she became an important mentor and a colleague, and, and, and I was her student. It takes about 12,000 pieces to fire the kiln. Big pieces, small pieces. It takes a, a year and a half of making pieces. These are all getting ready for the 12th firing. It takes seven weeks of loading, 10 days of firing, a week of cooling, a week of unloading, 
nine months of cleaning, it doesn't fit an academic system. You can't all of a sudden make something and get a grade. It doesn't fit a commercial market at all. So why is this system so important? It's the best ecological and energy model, and it's the best community building model for culture. Because it takes 45 people to fire this kiln and five cooks who are cooking meals. My wife Colette organizes all the chefs so that sometimes we have 300 people for dinner here during the firing because they're coming to see this and they want to be here to help. I am certain that the clay we wash, the materials we get, are the purest. So that I can rest easy at night that what I make for human beings is not only safe, but it can last 100 years and you can hand it down generationally. That means something. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Humanities Council, a nonprofit, independent state partner of the National Endowment for the Humanities, the North Dakota Council on the Arts, and by the members of Prairie Public.